Tell you what, I really love the new Fantex case. It was it was really easy to build in, but I did a pretty simple build this time, mainly because I was going to get a either a 280 or a 360 AIO. I think I was going to get a Kraken, but uh, and uh, I put the Radeon 7 back in, took the 2080 Strix out, but I think this is going to be my main build. I think I'm going to upgrade to the 3900X as long as the reviews are good. But I have my money already, already to pre-order it. But I think I'm gonna put the 3900X and the 2080 Ti in here, and probably put the uh, 8700K and the uh, the Strix 2080 in this one, and the 2700X and the Radeon 7 was in this now in my Coolmaster Storm uh, Striker. But out of all the cases I've built in lately, I really like this the best. It was a breeze. I like the way it's set up. and I just like the whole package. And it's got really more room inside it than the Coolmaster Storm Striker I have, really. Because it's a real tight fit up top of it. This one's got a lot more room. Yeah, I do like the RGB strips in the front. I think it looks cool, and I really love the all-metal design. And the cooling's not too bad at all. And I finally got my RAM working. It took me a while, and I had to reinstall Windows. No matter what I did, I put a new, uh, I got two uh, NVMe SSDs in it, and I put a new one in last night, uh, one terabyte. And no matter what I did, I could not boot Windows. I tried everything, so I finally just reinstalled it and it worked. Then I had trouble getting the RAM to work at 3600, but I didn't know that for some reason the XMP was just an Intel thing. It took me forever to find the uh, setting in uh, in the SUS BIOS. Yeah, I forgot what it's called. It's like D something, D-O-C-P or something like that. Probably not right, but it's, it's four letters. But I finally got it working. But I'm pretty excited for the new 3900X. I think it's going to be a good CPU, and uh, I'm sure my uh, Crosshair 7 is up to the task. It's got one of the better VRMs on the X470 motherboards. You know, the 8 core might even be better in games because I'm not sure how the latency is going to be with two uh, chiplets, you know, instead of one. But. You know, the, the IPC increase alone makes it worth it as long as, you know, everything runs good. I'm really excited for it. Now, you know, 12 core for 500 bucks, you know, that's a great deal in my book. You know, it's Intel's 8 core price. But, and I still have not even tried out the new uh, LG monitor with the uh, 7. I still have it hooked to the 27 inch G Sync. But I've just been kind of lazy lately. But just uh, messing around. Uh, this card runs fine, but the stock voltage on it's like a 1120. My other card was 10, 10, 1070. And that one's this one's 1120. So you know my other card was actually bend a little better, but this one works, and it'll go down to at least you know a thousand millivolts on stock clocks. I could probably go lower if I dropped the memory, but you know, a thousand's okay. But another thing, though, the factory fan curve is not good enough. I mean, I don't care if I even take the case, the front of the case off, and the uh, the dust filter, and run everything on high, it still gets hot. It's just it runs a little too hot. You have to run those fans about three thousand RPM to keep that T junction temperature from going crazy. I still like the 7, but I still think the 2080 is a better card. I know people will say, oh, 16 gigs of VRAM, but do you really think they're going to alienate, you know, the one of the most popular VRAM sizes? You know, 8 and probably 6 because a lot of people have 1060s too. You know, I, I do like AMD, and I don't understand some people like buying, say, like back in the day, buying like a 1050 Ti over like a 470 or a 570 you know that would be really stupid if a lot of people did it or even you know a 1060 over a 580 
might be more efficient, but it's not as fast. But the 7, it is close to a 2080. It's not as fast. It may be in some games, but on the average, the 2080 is faster. Especially in both overclock and just the Radeon 7 and the instability issues. I, can, I was just messing around just tonight. And I don't tell you, it, I had at least 5 to 10 crashes and hard crash where I had to reset, you know, not just kicking me back out to the desktop like most of the time with a uh, NVIDIA card. No, it's it locks up and I'll get a black screen or all kinds of crap. But, I mean, I still like it. It's a neat card. But I don't think it's for everybody. But I'm just uh, messing around, uploading some stuff to YouTube. You know, I might I need to get actual a camera, a decent camera, maybe a mic and a good webcam. I'll start doing real videos because I haven't buy enough electronics to you know review and just mess around, and do some pretty decent videos. But yeah, just uh, showing you my new stuff, just tinkering around. Have a good one.